Hello! This video today is focusing on some basic numeracy skills and concepts that really underpin how our youngest children develop their understanding of numeracy uh, and the skills that they use. Uh, maths and numeracy in particular have a lot of jargon associated to them, so this video may be helpful when we share how your child is getting on and developing uh, their numeracy skills. It might help you understand what we're talking about in terms of some of those concepts too. One of the things that children are often most excited to tell you when you're in nursery or at home is, I can count, and they'll demonstrate, they'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, as well, or maybe even go much further than that, um, say with sort of forward number sequence uh, as well. But what does it actually mean to be able to count, and what skills do our children really need to underpin that? so that they can use it in lots of different ways. I'm also going to talk today a little bit about numbers. Number is a great word, but it actually encompasses lots of different types of things. Quantities, the numerals themselves, and patterns as well. So I'll talk a little bit about that uh, too. So I'm going to start off by talking about that forward number sequence. When a child says they can count and they go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, what they're actually doing is they're repeating the forward number sequence. They're not counting objects at that point, they're just saying something that they've heard over and over again and they've learned it in their head. And that's great because that, we need that uh, for the children to be able to count later on. Uh, they learn this through songs, through uh, repetition, through games, things like playing hide and seek and counting up uh, for that as well are great for uh, developing their forward number sequence. But just as important as the forward number sequence is being able to do the backwards number sequence. So we can count up to 10, but actually counting down from 10 is really important too. And that's because our forward number sequence will help our children with mental addition when they're older. And our backwards number sequence, the ability to count down or count back, will help them with subtraction. Now we practice counting up lots. But children, do they really practice counting down a lot? Well, we do lots of songs uh, like uh, Zoom, 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 Rocket to the Moon and, and Counting Down to Blast Off uh, to help them within 10. But actually, they need to practice that once they've got that secure counting down from 10 and they're a bit older, they also need to be able to practice counting down from 20 or 30 even and crossing those tricky numbers at the decades of 20 or 10 as well. Um, we use rhymes and games and all these sorts of things and lots of repetition for children to develop their forward number sequence, but also their backwards number sequence from 10 in nursery as well. And the reason we do that is because they want to be able to count and count. And I'm going to talk about counting quantities. So I'm not just talking about numbers here, I'm talking about the, how many there is of something. So I've got here my ducks. I'm going to lay them out here and I've got a little basket. And with children, uh, you might notice when they start to count things that they might go something like this. They might go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you can see that's not how many ducks we've got here. They've used their forward number sequence. They've been really good at that. But what they're missing here is what we call one-to-one -one correspondence. Now it's a bit jargony, but really one-to-one -one correspondence is that ability to know that you say a number each time you touch one of the objects or each time you look at one of the objects. You assign that number to the object when you're counting to find out how many there are, what the quantity is. So one-to-one -one correspondence is really one, two, three, four, five. And that takes lots of repetition, lots of play, lots of counting that they want to do themselves or counting in lots of different situations at home and at nursery to secure that and to become confident with that. It doesn't just happen straight away. One thing we do do to help children with counting uh, and developing the one-to-one -one correspondence is rather than just pointing at things to begin with, we get them to move them. So I might get them to count them into the basket. It's a much more physical movement each time they say a number. One two, three, four, five. Things that you can do at home are things like counting out knives and forks if you're setting the table or counting out pencils uh, that they've got in a pot and actually physically moving them. And then they'll build up to being able to just point and say the numbers securely too. 
Now, when they're counting things, this can be quite frustrating for you as a parent sometimes. You can maybe have, I've got some pom-poms here. Um, you can maybe have some uh, pom-poms there and they might go, oh, how many are there? And they've got good one-to-one -one correspondence. They go one, two, three, four. And you say, how many are there? And they go six. Or they go one, two, three, four. Or, oh, how many are there? Three. And they're really excited. They've been counting it and they've had really good one-to-one -one correspondence. They've just counted it in front of you, but they've given you the wrong answer. Now, that's because there's this little principle that we've all learned in our lives and we don't really think about. And it's called the cardinal principle. And it really means that we know that when you count a set of objects, when you say the last number, that is how many objects there actually are. And actually, that's something that we all have learned at some point in our life and that our children have to learn too. So... With uh, in nursery, sometimes we have different objects and I'll lay them out and I'll have a different colour at the end. Or I'll, when I demonstrate it, I'll really make a fuss of that last number, uh, as we say, and I'll go one, two, three, four, or I'll be a bit funny with it as well. Uh, and it's really just repetition and lots of opportunities to play and count that helps children develop that too. Uh, so that they know that this is four, the last number they say when they're counting is the total quantity that we've got there. So let's talk a little bit about numbers, numerals and quantities. When we were counting like our ducks there, we were working out the quantity of something, how many there were of it uh, as well. Numbers, when we think about numbers, we often think of these. Now these are actually technically written as numerals. So if we say to you that your child can recognise the numerals from zero to 10, it means that if we show them that, they'll be able to say that's four, for example, uh, as well. But we have numbers displayed in lots of other ways. Dot patterns on dominoes uh, and on dice are very common. And actually playing lots of dice games and domino games at home really help your children, not just with their numeracy skills, but with turn taking and that social skill of being able to win and lose uh, as well. So I actually really recommend that. But if I show you this, you probably know that that is four. And you've not had to pause the video and go one, two, three, four. You've just recognised that as the number four. And that's because you can do subitizing. You can subitize certain numbers up to a certain amount, which just means you can see it and you know that's the quantity that's there. So our, we are wanting our children in the long term to develop that skill. Now that takes a lot of practice, a lot of play, and children into primary one and primary two are still learning this skill. But some children will pick that up faster than others. Um, and the, the way we do that is really just through counting the, the dots and getting used to that as well. And using, our, uh, using um, games like um, board games, snakes and ladders, things like that, to help them explore those too. Now, talking about numerals now, we do lots of spotting of numerals, and you can do it at home or spotting them on buses, signs, anywhere. So here are our numerals. Our first stage of spotting them is recognising them. I tell you something, this might be one of the first ones that your children start talking about. If, it's, if they're three years old, they'll know, that's my number. They'll say, oh, that's three, I'm three. We explore number patterns through finger patterns as well uh, to really get it nice and solid for them too. Once they can recognise them, we do games like, can you point to number nine? Oh, here's number nine. Oh, uh, can you tell me what this number is? Zero. And we do teach them about zero as well. We use that word, zero, that good mathematical term as well, because it's important that they know what that number is for nothing uh, too. Then it's building up to being able to actually sort those numbers into sequence, into the correct order. So knowing that they have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And what we've made here is what we call a number line. We're really wanting our children to develop in their head a concept of number, that their own number line. So not just the ability to say the numbers in order, but also to be able to go up and down that line in different directions, which will help them when they learn to add and subtract when they're a little bit older and moving into primary school as well.
So we do lots of games. We point and we count up. We count down because remember that backwards number sequence is so important for subtraction later. We do games where we cover their eyes and we hide some of the numbers and we say, oh, what do you think's hiding under here? Some of them might need to go one, two, three, four, five to work it out. Others might be a little bit more advanced and actually know that, well, actually four, the next number is five. And that ability to be able to, to know what the next number is or the number before eight, knowing that actually the number that comes before eight is seven, is actually really important too. And we do this through games and lots of different activities too, but you can explore numbers when you're out and about uh, with your family or just around the house and just have fun with numbers. That's really important uh, too. So children all learn at their own pace. And it's really important that a lot of these concepts, your children might start to learn or develop in nursery, but it might take them into primary one or even into primary two to really get those um, really solid in their mind. We just wanted to outline some of these um, concepts so that you can understand them a bit better. Um, and also to remind you that the most important thing for them is to play and enjoy exploring numbers. And so there you go, there's a quick run through of some basic numeracy skills that your child will be developing in nursery and into primary one and beyond uh, as well. Now it's really important to remember that actually the best way our youngest children learn is through play and through exploration. So actually it's more meaningful for them to be learning and developing their understanding of numeracy through um, their own active play, through helping with routines around the house, maybe setting out knives and counting out knives and forks at the table, uh, through exploring numbers in their world around them in lots of different ways as well. That's much more successful than just simply focusing on trying to teach them concepts um, in a sort of vacuum without that meaning around them as well. Hopefully you found this video uh, useful and if you ever have any questions please get in touch with myself or one of the team.